Greetings, this is Jazz for Jazz Reviews. Bringing you the latest on the all new adaption of true crime Hong Kong, Sleeping Dogs. Developed by United Front Games for Xbox 360, PS3 and PC, is Kung Fu fighting your way through noodle shops with a hype? Does the originality of Hong Kong complement the game, or does it detract from the open world environment? Meh. Let's find out. Why is it against oh, for God's sake, Tang, he's one of us. Jesus, Pendrew, let me get the door. There are few badges outside who didn't hear you. It's all right, Wei, we can trust her. Trust her? I just met her. Sleeping Dogs tells the tale of undercover cop Wei Shan. Returning from California, Wei is expected to infiltrate the triads of Hong Kong by rising through the ranks of Sun on Ye and forging unstable relationships with fellow members whilst reporting and ratting them out to the HKPD. We got them. We got them. So the storyline underpins a constant moral struggle between both the underworld and the law. All I have to do is read the goddamn newspapers, they're calling it a massacre! It's always more entertaining to root for the anti-hero in video games, with Wei in his downward spiral slipping and losing himself over time. The main character is genuinely interesting, as are the majority of voice actors including Emma Stone and Lucy Liu. Wei is the only one who said no, the only one. But the storyline seems unable to take the final leap. The developers completely missed the potential to be more than just an average Hong Kong action movie. The heated interactions with both the police and triads never amount to anything massive. The ending and the game in general never really leave a lasting impression. The writing could be improved, along with a very, very limited girlfriend system which seems more underdeveloped than anything. That's great! One-off dates with Emma Stone and other girls hint at a possible spill over to the main storyline, but nothing ever happens. Treat them as side missions. The excellent way shit! So here is our meat and potatoes. The fighting mechanics. I can tell you now, I was not disappointed driving Wei's shoe through this guy's jaw. Unlike many other aspects to the game, the core mechanics surrounding fist fighting are dynamic. Enemies don't wait around as they would do in Assassin's Creed. If you don't counter in time, you're gonna end up with a face full of kitchen knives. Through collecting the various jade statues scattered across the map, the player can actually choose new moves to further complement the entire system. It's not a very complicated system, but overall I'm very happy with what the developers have produced for us here, including all those brutal environment interactions. In comparison with any other mechanic in the game, Sleeping Dogs will give you that satisfaction. It's not groundbreaking, but it's fluid. Unlike some reviewers, I completely disagree with combat feeling sluggish. But the gunplay on the other hand, it does feel mediocre. Gameplay in this area lacks that much needed polish to bring it up to par with what other games have mastered. Sleeping Dogs is not primarily a shooting game. The overall combat experience reminds me much more of a warrior style system than, say, that of GTA or Mafia 2. But you know what? What's gotta be said is how cool the game makes you feel running and gunning down cops and getting the hell out of it. As opposed to how most people would play the game, I spent hours just setting up tactical bottlenecks and trying to survive for as long as possible. It's not easy, and you've gotta concentrate. One or two shots and you're dead. But I'm not gonna lie, it's the odd things such as the sketchy cover system that detach from the experience itself. With a decently sized map, it's the little things such as the annoyance of intending to catch a taxi and ending up carjacking the poor guy, all due to a lack of polish. In some ways, I feel a lot has been crammed in, but nothing is polished or, as I'll say, truly mastered. But with some very cool segments involving car chases, be expected to use both the bumper buttons, the trigger and the analog sticks all at once, which isn't all that easy to execute at 100 miles an hour. Moving on, the game differentiates between both cop and triad missions. Police errands involving usually less bloody encounters are more tech savvy bug planting, car tailing and general reconnaissance. You can expect a bunch of little interfaces here and there including safe cracking and lock picking and small subtle things like that. The hacking is actually fun. It's not as complicated as, say, Deus Ex, but simple and not so much a chore as it is in other games. Triad missions can get hectic, with massive shootouts and chases involving basic parkour maneuvers and slow motion shootouts vaulting over objects and leaping from your car into another car. And the cinematics do well to capture all the chaos between the feuding gangs. But Hong Kong is depicted exactly the way I thought it would be, and the environment and open world of Hong Kong is more than welcome in an industry lacking innovation these days. The graphics in general are very good. Great, perhaps not. 
In all of this, the player will be awarded with both cop and triad points to unlock new upgrades such as reduced recoil and slow motion jumping from a car. Expect the occasional inconsistency with camera angles and collision detection on the consoles. But anticipate World War 3 with the camera angles of a mouse and keyboard. Riding a motorcycle can be an insanely difficult task if you can't see where you're going in time. Not to mention the ridiculous difference in the sensitivity between walking and driving. As I ride a nice little Yamaha 125 myself, forking out 150 grand on a 1000cc sports bike wasn't one of my greatest decisions. It's a Yamaha YZF by the way. So yeah, there is a range of side content sewn onto the game, which is all usually dependent on what sleeping dogs dub the face level, which is simply a popularity meter you fill completing missions and dishing out brain damage. These lines flatter you. So along with a small collection of cars and motorbikes to purchase, the player will also be entitled to change their clothes. Moving on, you'll find numerous NPCs standing outside massage parlors to increase that face level experience gain along with all the noodles you can eat to fill your health bar. These sort of interactions are welcome, but not to be elaborated upon really. I'm not going to call out everything, as it'll probably just be better for the player to just stumble into minigames such as cockfighting, karaoke, and whatnot. The extra content is there, but don't expect too much substance from either the minigames or the side missions. But combined together, I feel the developers have provided a game that shouldn't overly distract the player too much from the main storyline. But with everything that is there, expect a playthrough time in excess of 20 hours counting up all the extra content. Side missions could involve helping a friend escape the cops, throwing drunks into cars, stealing cars, and chasing down thieves. In conclusion, I'd like to say Sleeping Dogs was a very, very fun title to play. It's all too easy to compare one sandbox to the other, but you'll soon discover Sleeping Dogs is a game in its own right. There's no multiplayer, but that's in no way a big deal. But there is a leaderboard scoring system in place for those of you who want to compete against the world, or just your friends. In how, who can pull the longest wheelie for example, or survive from the cops the longest. What kind of grade school shit is this, huh? I work my ass off all day, so fuck off and grow up. Sleeping Dogs is a solid game that holds all the aspects of an open world game, but never truly masters what has made other open world developers kings of the genre. On a purely technical level, Sleeping Dogs is lacking, but it doesn't feel that bad a game. Why? Because in truth there is a lot here to keep you occupied, and the truth is, there's not too much for me to analyse here. What you see on screen is what you get, and it is strangely very fun despite its flaws. Flaws which would hold other games back and give the player a hard time. But we can put up with that here. My advice, either rent this title as soon as you can, or wait until after the gaming rush that is September, November and partly December, and pick it up then. This has been Jazz for Jazz Reviews. And this has been Square Enix's latest hit, that is Sleeping Dogs. I hope you liked the review and any questions at all will be answered in the comment section below. So thank yous for watching, the gaming rush will soon be upon us. With a ton of games to review, I better be prepared. Feel free to throw us a subscription and maybe, maybe even follow my brand new Twitter that I'll leave a link to in the description below. Thanks again, goodbye and farewell. <laughs>